So today we are working on a different variation of the banded press. We did, typically we're vertical pressing, so overhead. Now we're gonna go horizontal and do a banded bench press. This is gonna help you get stronger and a bigger, better bench press, which of course everybody wants. So to set up, what we have is we have a bench. We took dumbbells. I used 65 pound dumbbells on each side and I took a red band and you can see that I've essentially just doubled it. So in the vertical press, we don't double it. We just hook the band through and pull it overhead. This time I'm taking both ends and I'm hooking it on my barbell. From there, I built up to about 40 to 45% of my max because the red bands are typically guy bands. Girls typically use orange micro bands, but I don't have those here right now. So I went with red bands and I just lowered my weight percentage just a little bit. Uh, once we get everything set up and I warm up, I hit eight sets of three, just like the overhead press, uh, but one set every 30 seconds, starting on the 30 second mark. So you're not getting 30 seconds of rest, you're doing your first three reps at zero, your next three at 30, and so on for eight total sets. The way it worked today is I hit a close grip bench for three, then I went middle or neutral grip, and then I went wide grip on my bench press. That was three sets, back to close, middle, wide, and then I ended for set seven and eight, close and wide. How do you know what grip is what? For me, close grip when I sit down on the bench and I'm under it and I'm getting set up. I'm putting my pointer finger right where the knurling meets the smooth. So when I'm lying down, this is my close grip. When I go wide or middle, I bring my thumb up. So you can see that where the smooth meets the rough, I'm now a thumbs width distance. And then to go wide, I bring my ring finger onto the first ring of that barbell. So that helps me determine where my close, my middle, and my wide should be. When I get set up, the biggest thing I like to think about is when I'm lying underneath of the bar, I think about taking a breath. So I'm setting by pulling my shoulders back and down. So from the side, it would look like this. And then I have this slight arch in my back. My hips stay down, my feet stay down. So you wanna be pushing your feet through the floor. You wanna keep your butt on the bench, but it's okay to tuck your shoulders down and back to make sure we're activating and turning on our lat and then we're able to drive straight up, straight back down, isolating our chest. I like to offset a lot of the chest work and the pressing work with some pulling. Uh, going back to horizontal pulling. So I feel like most of us learn ring rows in on-ramp or as beginners in CrossFit. And then as soon as we get the kipping pull-up or strict pull-up or butterfly pull-up, whatever it may be, we never go back to ring rows. Ring rows are something that I absolutely love to do. I think the biggest key is gonna be make sure you're staying hollow. So when I say hollow, squeezing your butt and your quads, making sure we're not throwing our hips up to the ring, almost like a kipping ring or a ring a kipping ring row. We wanna make sure we're holding everything nice and tight and that we set. So I'm setting my shoulders back, making sure that I'm not having my shoulders in my ear or letting my chest round. But what I'm focusing on using is my lats and then strengthening my upper back, right? So when I row, I wanna imagine my shoulder blades are pinching like a pencil together between my shoulder blades to make sure I still work those muscles and I'm not only doing vertical pulling. Setup wise, so if you feel like you've mastered ring rows, uh, without a box. Really the next step is gonna be to get your body as parallel to the floor as possible, if not inclined. So that means your feet are actually gonna be more above your head. So I like to take the rings, the way I measure them is to sit right about the bottom of the ring, sits right about my hip. From there I put a box out in front. I started on a lower box, making sure I could maintain my hollow position and I wasn't cheating my ring rows by throwing my hips up to the rings. Then from there, that got a little bit, it felt a little bit easy, so I raised my box up a little bit. What that did was it took my feet from being lower to bringing my feet up, so my body was in a nice parallel position at the floor, forcing me to have to pull just a little bit harder and work a little bit harder to maintain my hollow body position. Again, make sure shoulders stay down, we keep our long neck, and we're focusing on our shoulder blades squeezing together, doing the work with our lower trap, our lats, rather than our upper traps on these. <laughs> That's why I'm giggling. Let's get the bands. Stronger abs over here. Just kidding. 
for our ab work today. I like to use the GHD in all sorts of ways. So hold, GHD sit-ups, rotations, but today we're gonna do a supine hold, just like our GHD extension, extension with some paddling. Make sure that you guys can do the GHD extension hold in a supine position. So that means we're face up staring at the ceiling. So we wanna make sure we can hold for 45 to 60 seconds at a minimum before we add in paddling. So once I've mastered that, what I'm gonna do to get set up, feet just go in. I'm gonna take my PVC pipe behind my head like you saw, and then I'm just gonna focus on small rotations. So I'm driving my elbows forward, just rotating with my torso for 30 seconds, and then I reverse. So now I'm pulling my elbows backwards, rotating with my torso for 30 seconds. Three sets of a minute, rest as you need in between. For our knees, you're gonna have a slight bend in your knee. We don't want our butt on the pads. We wanna make sure our butt's off the pads or just behind the pad. And then our legs can be fully extended, but not totally locked out with that slight bend in our knee. So today I did three sets of 60 second paddling. So 30 seconds one way and then 30 seconds opposite. Then you rest as needed in between. There's been a ton of interest in the strength work, the accessory work. So I hope you guys really enjoyed the strength session. I absolutely love adding the bands to my strength movements. It's helping tremendously. I tried to go through the band setup today. If there's anything else that we're missing that you guys really wanna see so you can implement, implement this into your own training, please comment below because I'm excited. I wanna share it with you. I love when I find something that helps me. I just wanna share it with everyone. So please comment below whatever it is you wanna see. We're gonna try to put out a strength session like this once a week moving forward just to help you guys progress and grow in your training as well we've got some other exciting stuff coming up i'm going to start training for a sanctional in january at crossfit mayhem we've got a new dinner nutrition recipe coming out soon and are hoping to get our core and our accessory program out within this next month so make sure you guys like you subscribe check out our website ibextrain.com the link is also in the description and have a great day